If you've had enough of those fun activities that are called for team bonding, like escape rooms and Zoom dress up parties, maybe rafting day or offsite somewhere exciting, you are not alone. There is research that is actually conflicting, but some of them point to ineffectiveness as far as building teams for the purpose of performance and working well together when you use those kinds of activities. So in this video, we are going to explore five reasons why these team building activities actually don't work. And in an upcoming video, we will then look into what can you really do for actual team building if your purpose is to look for cohesion, performance and effectiveness for your teams. And if that is the sort of thing that you're looking for, then this video and the next one might be just what you need. So let's get started. Hey there, my name is Petula, your host here at All Things Agile. If you haven't subscribed already, you should consider doing so, so you don't miss any video from now on. And the videos here range from anything from team performance, coaching, agile in organizations, and the likes, anything that you really need to become an awesome, professional, effective agile coach, helping all the people growing with you along the journey. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about team building. And like I mentioned, video two, it's gonna be a little bit brighter. Let's look at some many interesting parts of team building and development. But in this video, things are a little bit more on the critique side of things. Let's really look into why people care about team building activities in the first place and should they? And the second thing that we're gonna see in today's video is why those funky activities don't really work. Not if your hopes is that the team will be cohesive, will be performing, will be excellent together. So let's get started. Why do people even care about team building? Well, there are assumptions. So the first one is look at Google. They are so successful. So from bean bags to adventure land type of activities, I'm going to bring that to my organization and we are going to be so performing and so successful like they are, right? Not necessarily, but that is the assumption that many managers and HR might have when they think about using those team building activities. The second assumption is that if you bond on a personal level, you then will be more high performing. That is a little interesting one because there is actually no research that shows a proven link between loving the people that you work with and being the best at what you do and as a team. So it's a little bit of a, of a push, but it's still one of the reasons why managers and the like would try those team building activities. And it comes from a place of good heart. They really mean well, and it's not a bad assumption per se, it's just an unproven one. And in fact, that might be a misunderstanding of some studies. One that I'm going to show here on the screen, it, it tells us that compared with people at low trust companies, people at high trust companies report a lot less stress, a lot more energy, and they're just more productive overall. So this is a very superficial approach to a research. So we need to look into the data closely and I won't be doing this here, but sometimes that what happens in organizations, they look at a headline like that and they run with it. We really need to understand what we are talking about trust here. What do we mean by that? And even when you think about less stress or more happiness, what does happiness mean for your teams and even at an individual level? So maybe the concept of, of fun and happiness are sometimes taken at face value in a very superficial level. And if that is the case, then the assumption will be absolutely wrong. And, and that's why we're going to see then how damaging or disruptive of just plainly ineffective those team building activities can be. If we look at into why it doesn't work, we're going to combine a little bit of simplified research data. And like I said, they are never really conclusive so far. And I'm going to use as well a lot of my own coaching and why not my employee experience over the course of many decades. The first reason is that those generic team building activities, they infringe on personal spaces and they might make people feel unnecessarily vulnerable. Not everybody is very comfortable with other people touching them. And you have some activities where you have to touch a lot. You might even fall into people's arms. And I'm not sure about you, but that 
that infringes a very personal physical boundary. And for some people that is even culturally unacceptable. So when I talk about diversity of culture in the workplace, you need to consider these things. You might have a level of extroversion in a few peers, but I'm not sure your fantastic software developer is really well known by his or her ability to do small talk. So they might be in, an, in a situation in those team building activities where they just can't really see their place. And a problem with that is also that you sometimes might learn things about your colleagues, some preferences, some ways of doing things that is just something that you shouldn't know that is mostly private about their fears, about their first time reactions. And you're not going to start passing judgment on these kinds of things. You can't guarantee that the whole experience will really be positive for everybody. You can't guarantee people won't feel self-conscious if they have to dress in a certain way or if they have to run or even feel that their bodies is a little bit more exposed. You don't know how people feel about water. Are they afraid of water? Are they afraid of heights? All those kinds of things that are deeply personal and people shouldn't need to justify them in the context of work. The second one is don't confuse work with fun. I get a lot of heat about that one, but in fact, fun is serious business. And I'm actually described as someone who is kind of fun to work with. But here's the thing. Like I mentioned in the studies, there is no positive correlation between the amount of fun that you have at work and the amount of performance that comes out of the team. Now, we're not discussing necessarily employee engagement and feel good and other kind of stuff, but we're talking about team performance here. And in fact, another key element in this is that fun is actually relative. For some people, mind games and intellectual games are more, they're kind of fun. For others, it has to be something more physical and out there. So there's all kinds of diversity, as you can think, neurodiversity here, cultural diversity, and other things that are deeply personal related to the concept of fun. And that brings us to number three, which is no link between the activity and the actual work that you would perform. Sometimes your work has nothing to do with fun and it's actually very precise and even borderline stressful, and the activity might be completely disconnected in the skill sets for what you really need to be high performing at work. And that was the original intention of the uh, team building exercise in the first place. One of the things that show the type of disconnection is the element of trust. The type of trust that you need to operate in the workplace is not necessarily the trust that you have with your friend or with a family member. That is a different relationship that you are not required to have at work. And friendship means different things, once again, for different groups of people. And you don't need to cross that line at work. One could even argue that you can be way too lenient with your friends at work when you wouldn't necessarily, when you maintain a certain level of professionalism that is, you know, borderline friendship, but not quite so. Reason number four is that a lot of these activities are compulsory and they are inconvenient. So once you have no saying in it, you have to go, you must go, or else you're not a team player, not a great badge to win in the first place. Then it may happen that the activity is really far away. So it's inconvenient to get there. So you're being troubled by something that is not even maybe your cup of tea. Or you might have to go with the bus that takes everybody to that far distant city. And now you're on the bus schedule. And if by any chance you need to come home because of an emergency or because something happened, you are really stuck somewhere on other people's time. What if you need to pick up your kids at school or if you are about to miss your fencing class? Those are the things that you need to do. They are part of your personal life and work shouldn't be encroaching on that necessarily unless you would like it to. And then there are even things like sometimes you have to dress in a way that's uncomfortable. Uh, you know, when you go, for example, rafting or you're going to do those adventure things that, you know, you might be all padded or you might be shooting each other. It's, it's extremely complicated when you start to look into the details of those activities. And then that brings the reason number five, which is it can amplify the wrong things. If there is dysfunction in your team, those activities actually can put you in situations that sometimes are too stressful or you have to think fast and people will fight and they will have a shared memory that's probably not what you might want. Not to mention that when you have your groups or sometimes even clicks, those groups' positions and ideas and even biases, they get very solidified as well. 
and you continue to love and work more closely to whom you already love and work close with. So you have those five reasons why those generic, very fun or very exciting team building activity might actually not work for you if what you're looking for is team cohesion, team effectiveness and team performance. Now, does that mean that you abandon team building activities? Absolutely not. In fact, there are specific activities that you can do that will give you those things. Now, do they have to be fun or do you need to part ways with fun forever? They can be fun. Fun can be the consequence and can be a result. It shouldn't just be the thing that you're seeking. Now, that being said, can it be fun and can it be gamified? Absolutely. So in an upcoming video, I'm going to talk to you about what actually team building activities should look like and it starts with the name team building they build the team so if you're really interested in that kind of stuff you want to watch that video for now this video ends here thanks so much for watching let me know in the comments if one of these five reasons really resonate with you maybe all of the five maybe i missed one or maybe you were completely on board and you love all of those funky fun team building exercises and they actually worked for your team. I'd love to hear your opinion. So stay tuned for the next video. I'll catch you then. Bye.